In this video demonstration, we will be going through the initial setup of a virtual smart zone controller. The Ruckus smart zone controllers are WLAN controllers that run the Ruckus smart zone operating system, which basically comes in two versions. We've got the smart zone essentials, and we also have the high scale version. Smart zone controllers are available in two deployment options as well, either as physical appliances or as a virtual machine. So for the appliances, we have the smart zone 100, which is running Smart Zone Essentials. And then we also have the Smart Zone 300, which is running the Smart Zone High Scale. For the virtual machine options, we have the Virtual Smart Zone Essentials and then also the Virtual Smart Zone High Scale. When, you, when you're looking at installing Smart Zone, whether you're deploying an appliance or the virtual version, uh, High Scale or Essentials, you'll find that the features and configuration options are almost identical uh, across all the platform. Uh, the main difference, though, you'll, what you'll notice is that uh, between the platforms, it basically pertains to scalability and the business case for your deployment. This table shows the differences in capacity between the essentials and the high scale platform. Functionally, there are no differences between virtualized and appliance based implementations, though there are some minor operational differences. If you're interested in getting a better understanding of these differences, uh, you can find more information about the differences in our product documentation, or you'll find a thorough explanation in our Smart Zone course, which is the RASA 200, which can be found on our training portal at training.ruckuswireless.com. Okay, as I said earlier, in this video demonstration, what we'll be doing is actually setting up a virtual Smart Zone. So what's highly recommended prior to uh, doing any type of deployment is going out and getting some of the product documentation. Uh, there's several different documents that we want to look at. So out on the support.ruckuswireless.com site, we've got a product documentation and our downloads uh, that we want to take care of. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and select uh, Virtual Smart Zone uh, from my menu here under Technical, technical Documents, which is going to take me to uh, the documents for the virtual smart zone. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is also filter on the latest release, which is 3.6. Uh, so under here, what you'll notice is that we've got uh, release notes, we've got a getting getting started guide, we have a quick setup guide, and an administrator guide. Uh, so definitely prior to doing any type of de deployment, uh, what we want to go ahead and do is, is review some of that documentation. Another important part is if I go into this quick, uh, the getting started guide, excuse me, not the quick setup, but the uh, getting started, and I go ahead and open this up, you'll see that, uh, scroll down, there's an important section in here when it comes to uh, the actual scalability. So I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit. And it's, it's actually scalability and in, in what is needed uh, as hardware resources uh, for the particular deployment you're trying to do. So we're, we're doing a high scale, so we've got that table here, uh, but also we have the essentials uh, table as well, uh, what resources are required for that. So what's important when you're working in a virtual uh, infrastructure, you've got different things uh, that, that uh, need to be, resources that need to be available for this t different deployment. I'm doing a very simplistic uh, deployment. You see down here that we've got, um, the AP count range uh, between one and 100 uh, access points, and then the amount of clients. Okay, so depending on what type of deployment you're doing, you know, you, you have to kind of think about that as well. It also shows how many nodes per cluster are, are supported, the, the uh, AP count per node. And then the important part for the virtualization aspect is you see here we have the vCPUs. So it's telling us that we need, at a minimum, two logical processors to spin up this particular virtual machine, we need a minimum of 13 gigs. So I can tell you from experience that uh, you won't be even be able to, to uh, bring up the virtual machine if you don't have the minimum requirements on some of this. Also, 100 gigs worth of storage is, is also required to bring this up. So I just wanted to point that out before we really get started. So I'm going to go back uh, to the main site. And under the uh, support site, uh, what I want to do is look at the uh, downloads. So this is the software. Again, I'm going to filter for 3.6. Uh, 
But what you'll find here are the different deployment packages that are available for a particular uh, release version. So what you're going to want to do is you, you notice that they've got the different uh, versions for uh, VMware. We've got Hyper-V, which is, is what I'll be demonstrating. Uh, you've got the different, uh, different uh, releases or packages that will be required to deploy the, the virtual machine. So you, before you get started, obviously, you need to go and, and, and grab the deployment package. Okay, again, uh, as I mentioned previously, uh, what I'm going to do is do a demonstration of the initial configuration for a virtual smart zone. I'm using Hyper-V. So one of, the, one of the topics that come up a lot are the, the different types of hypervisors that are supported. So again, you're going to want to reference either the release notes or looking at that getting started guide that I, that I showed you earlier, um, which has detailed steps on the actual bringing up the virtual machine in the different hypervisors that are supported. So again, make sure your hypervisor is supported. And also, uh, you're going to go ahead and reference that getting started guide for step-by-step -step instructions on how to bring it up. So for us, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to uh, go ahead and create a new virtual machine. I'm just going to call this, give a friendly name. So I'm going to do H1. So high scale one is basically what I'm calling it. You, you do have the option to uh, go ahead and store that virtual machine in a different location physically on the, on the server. Uh, if you wish to, but we're going to go ahead and use that as default. Go, not get into too much detail right now, but we're going to go ahead and select generation one. And there's there's different types of, there's two different generations that are supported uh, with Hyper-V. But for our implementation, I'm going to use generation one. Startup memory. So uh, as I said in that getting started guide, we saw that at a minimal configuration, I need 13 gigs. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in 14,000 for now. The other, the other thing here on the Hyper-V is use dynamic memory. So I don't want that. Uh, I wanted to go ahead and limit and cap it at, at the, uh, the 14 gig there. Um, so go ahead and click Next. <clears throat> uh, another important uh, aspect is the networking. Okay, so there's three main things that we need to look at when we're deploying the virtual machine. One of them is the network, okay? So if in this implementation and the demonstration that I'm doing, I'm doing very simplistic, we're just gonna have one virtual interface for the particular VM. But if you're familiar with SmartZone, we do have different interfaces that can be created uh, with the, the setup. So part of, the, part of before you deploy is actually getting the virtual networking infrastructure in place as well. Uh, but what I'm going to go ahead and do the connection wise, I've got a Ruckus virtual switch uh, that's been created previously that I'm going to be using. And this will basically bridge me from the, this particular machine over the physical interface on the server. So I'll go ahead and click next on this. When we get to this step, We've downloaded previously when we went and uh, looked at the support.ruckuswireless.com site, we downloaded virtual hard disk. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is select use an existing. I'm going to go ahead and browse to that. Um, I put it in the downloads folder. And so I have, I've already uncompressed the zip. And I'm going to go ahead and go in there and select the virtual hard drive. Notice that the, the version I'm using is 3.6.1. Okay, so I'll go ahead and click Next on this. I have a summary uh, of the information that I've specified so far, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, click Finish. Okay, now that we've created the virtual machine, I want to go ahead and go in and edit it because, there, again, there are a couple of different things that we got to make sure are configured correctly. So the first one was memory. Uh, you see that here. Um, we also notice I only have one virtual processor. So I'm gonna to need to do at a minimum, uh, as we saw those scalability requirements, I need to go ahead and bump that up to two at a minimum, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that. And again, uh, depending on which hypervisor you're using, uh, the setup will be a little bit different on how you're setting up the networks, um, allocating memory, and allocating storage. Uh, but again, we, we're implementing this with a virtual hard drive, and then, so the other, the other piece you might want to look at is the uh, storage available for the virtual machine. But I'm going to go ahead and click OK to apply the settings. Now that I've got the settings for the virtual machine corrected, 
uh, what I want to go ahead and do is, is spin this v virtual machine up. Um, so I'm just going to right click on it and I'm going to go ahead and start the virtual machine. You'll see that it's starting. Uh, at this point, I'm also going to connect. And you'll see that it starts up on the, the boot up process uh, for the virtual machine. This will take several minutes, and eventually what you'll get to is a, a login prompt. Okay, so what I did is went ahead and truncated some of the uh, video that was just showing the, the boot up process. Uh, it only takes one or two minutes before the VM is, is actually up and running on, in the virtual smart zone is, is up and running. So uh, at this point, what we wanna do is go ahead and uh, log in. We're gonna use the default credentials, which are admin and admin. We'll get the CLI that comes up. At this point in juncture, we want to go ahead and make a decision on based on how many interfaces we want for this particular virtual machine. So the two options are to have one interface, which all traffic will go uh, over, or if we want three different interfaces uh, to be configured. So if, if uh, again, on this particular example, we're just going to go ahead and do a simplistic uh, demo using one interface. Uh, but if you needed to, we could, at this point, what we do is go ahead and uh, type in enable, go into the privilege mode and we can go ahead and set up the uh, interfaces uh, in that in, in the privilege mode. Um, so for here though, we're gonna go ahead and do is, is set up. Okay, so the first thing it's gonna ask me is whether I wanna make this an essentials virtual machine or a high skill. Again, looking back at the video, it, it's gonna be based on your deployment scenario uh, the scalability requirements you have, and then you know what you're actually trying to do, the business case with uh, the virtual smart zone. So uh, for this example, I'm going to go ahead and select two for high scale. It's going to prompt to ask me to make sure I'm, I'm that's what I'm wanting to choose. This is uh, it, it does want to make sure that you've done it because once you've made the selection, uh, you cannot revert back. Um, so we're going to go ahead and say yes. Okay, so it went ahead and made the selection. It's 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 taken that. Now it's asking us for network information. Okay, so for this again, I'm just going to do a simple uh, demo here. So I'm going to go ahead and just pick IPv4. It's going to go ahead and disable IPv6. So you could do DHCP if you wanted to. But I'm going to go ahead and do manual and and uh, put in a static IP. So I'm going to go ahead and put in an address uh, that I want for this uh, particular virtual machine put the mask in and the gateway. So this will be gateway for the network. Okay, so it's asking uh, those are correct. Go ahead and say yes. All right, so it's also asking for a DNS. I'm just gonna hit enter, not putting a secondary DNS. Okay, for the control NAT IP, uh, basically what you're looking there for is the IP address that's on the other side or the public side of your NAT server or NAT device. Okay, so if you're if you're needing to communicate outside of the network, uh, we want the public IP that's going to be used uh, that would do the NAT translation for us to get to this uh, virtual machine. Right now, I'm just going to hit enter. Uh, it's not really required right now. I can go back in and configure that later once I'm actually in the system. If I did have access points that are outside of my local network, I would need to configure that NAT IP address. And so I'm just going to hit go ahead and hit enter, which will get us going here. Okay, so we've gone through the initial setup uh, of the VM, setting IP address, picking high scale uh, versus essentials uh, in the menu. And once it basically restarts the network, uh, we're able to go ahead and log into the smart zone virtual machine. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and go to the HTTPS uh, 192.168.1.160, which is the address I put in for the uh, virtual uh, smart zone. Uh, but then we're also using port 8443. You'll notice that it has a certificate error. We can go ahead and ignore that uh, as that's expected at this point. So I'm going to go click on details. I'm going to go ahead and go to the web page itself. All right, so we are dropped into the wizard uh, to set up the, the rest of the uh, smart zone. 
so the first step we're on is the cluster information. So I'm going to go ahead and just call it, give the cluster a, a friendly name. Ruckus cluster one. Controller name, I'm going to go ahead and st still use the, the dash H1. Um, the description, you can go ahead and just tab in and it'll go ahead and insert that information. Uh, if you have another time server you want to use, you can uh, go ahead and, and configure that. But uh, the default already has the uh, the Ruckus uh, NTP server in there. Uh, the other option here is AP conversion. So if you have previously managed access points that were being managed by Zone Director and you want to have them automatically migrated over uh, to be managed by, with uh, Smart Zone, uh, you can go ahead and select that and that will help with that process. But I'm going to go ahead and leave that unchecked at this point. So the next thing it's gonna ask us to do is go ahead and set up uh, our passwords. So we have the administrator password uh, for the web interface and management, and then we also have an enable password that's used uh, with the CLI. So uh, they don't have to be the same. Uh, there are uh, some character requirements uh, to, to make the password more secure. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that up. And we click next. Okay, so it's asking you to review the settings um, before we actually go ahead and finish the uh, configuration wizard. Uh, so go ahead, click finish. And at this point it says uh, it's gonna take about 20 minutes. Um, so it's saying to stretch your legs, grab some coffee, uh, and then basically try to leave everything else alone. Um, you're gonna come back to this once uh, everything is, is done setting up. So we'll take a break from this and we'll come back after this, the smart zone, the virtual smart zone has uh, finished its configuration. Okay, so we've given the uh, configuration about 20 minutes to, to finish the setup. Um, you'll have a screen that looks like this when you come back. Uh, basically, we can go ahead and click on uh, the link that was provided. Uh, same thing with the certificate, we need to bypass that. And then we should be getting into the main screen. At this point, what you're going to do is go ahead and use the account that uh, you set up. So this is going to be the password that you set up in the in the previous setup with the admin account that was created. So once we've done that, we come in and we are at the main screen. Uh, this is the dashboard for the smart zone. So we're going to conclude this video uh, at this particular point. But do look for other videos with, with the virtual smart zone uh, in the smart zone product, and we'll go through and explain a little bit more about the application.